as people also in Haiti will say, mm -hmm. the name barbecue is coming from uh, the fact that this Jimmy Cherizier uses brutal force to to try and uh, go over the descent of other people who are opposing him. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the method that he used to, to kill people is to burn them. Wow. And he burns them inside the house. You are locked inside the house, mm. you get burned. That is what he, he did in, uh, in Haiti, mm. uh, where he killed 71 people. Boni, uh, what is the problem? The police being sent to Haiti to fight there in Haiti. Yeah. But the means that they don't know. And they, they don't yes. know what they are fighting. And and they are in Haiti. A classical case study. See, mm. we have West Pokot here. True. Banditry is in Endele and Bakasa is. True. It is because those people understand that terrain very well. You tell me something. If they have not been able to deal with uh, West Pokot, uh, do you think they will manage it? Okay. I know this is a very sensitive discussion. True. But uh, you know, the function of the military is to protect the country against external aggression. Yeah. The function of the military is not to fight civilians. You know, we have enough police in this country. Yeah. Uh, well, I know uh, the president is the commander in chief of the armed forces. Yeah. Of course, the army also has a duty to protect the topmost. He's the number one military officer. Yeah. So there is that bit that, you know, we are doing our part. Adam Duale, of course, approved that, but it raises pertinent co co constitutional issues. Is it legal? I know the court ruled otherwise, but of course it, it is a democratic country. Uh, I think the constitution is also a public document that can be read and consumed by anybody. I, also, I still hold the view that uh, it was not in order to deploy uh, the military I, didn't, I don't think the situation was that dire. Yeah. Uh, the military should not have been deployed. to should go to Haiti. They should have maybe gone to yeah. Haiti. And I'm, mm. I've been asking myself, why did the military didn't go to Haiti? It was only the police that went to Haiti. Well, you see, there is the National Security Council that sits mm. and advises the president. And uh, during that, in, that, in such sittings, they, there is how they deliberate. And there is how they decide. And then we also have um, state agreements. There is an agreement that you know, Kenya also has in as far as fulfillment of peace to other countries. There are such conventions that uh, states, interstate agreements, there are such agreements do exist. Tell us something about Haiti. What is happening in Haiti? Haiti, if, mm. if you want to understand what is happening in Haiti, you have to go back in history. Mm. When Papa Doc, uh, Duvalier was the president there. It's about 50s or 60s, 1950s or 60s there. So that guy was a dictator mm -hmm. and he introduced uh, a few people who uh, were criminals and gave them guns mm -hmm. and said they would defend him in case of anything because Haiti was bubbly. It was uh, a country that was prone to a lot of con a conflict and coups. Mm -hmm. So he brought in the, these people call the Tonton Makut. Yeah. So these Tonton Makut. Tonton were, Makut. Yes, yeah. they were criminals from, from prison as well as just uh, ruthless people around. Mm -hmm. Gave them guns to defend him. Now, that uh, introduction of civilians who are criminals with arms to defend the government went on. Uh, from from uh, Duvalier came to his son mm -hmm. called uh, Baby Doc. He was Papa Doc, was mm -hmm. nicknamed Baby Doc. Baby Doc. He also uh, went through with the, the, the Tonton Makut, mm -hmm. incorporated them in, in leadership. So Haiti, Ikendele, mm Ikazoya, -hmm. the country became used to uh, these people having guns, civilians, mm -hmm. and roaming around to defend the so-called government. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you look at it critically, you'll find that these arms or these gangs now were uh, incorporated into political parties in mm -hmm. Haiti. And now you had a, a society that was just getting used to some kind of anarchy mm. where if you don't go by what this political party says, mm. then an armed group will come mm. and try to defend the, the government or the opposition or ETC. Mm. So that is where we are right now. But this recent uprising in Haiti mm. is caused by after the assassination of Juvenile Moise, mm. 
who was the president of Haiti, the last president of Haiti. There has never been any other president. Now, Juvenel, who, who assassinated Juvenel Moise? Now, that is the, the contentious issue. Oh. Because one of the gangs, yeah. the opposition also had a gang. Mm. The government had uh, so the police. So, just fighting. They were fighting against each other. Yes. Oh. Even Juvenel Moise himself mm. could be implicated in this. Mm. Because he himself also had the police governing him and also the gangs. Mm -hmm. And that is where now... Jimmy Cherizi, yeah. a.k.a. Barbecue, yeah. comes in the picture. Yeah. Barbecue, when Juvenile Moise yeah. was the president, Barbecue was a police officer. Yeah. Then uh, he turned to be a gang leader, but still supporting Juvenile Moise. Yeah. But now, after the assassination of Juvenile Moise, the president, Barbecue came out yeah. and said, you guys, you are disrupting the peace of Haiti. Yeah. And uh, now the opposition gang and Barbecue, the opposition is called GPEP. Barbecue's uh, gang is called G9, mm. family uh, plus allies. So mm. they came into a conflict. There are over 200 gangs in Haiti. Uh -huh. Yeah. Can you, so, tell, can you tell us something about this Barbecue? Barbecue. Mm. Barbecue was a police officer and then turned to be a gang leader. Of course, now he's using, he's using the knowledge that he had from the mm. police service to lead this gang. As well as this name Barbecue, his original name or ID name mm. is Jimmy Cherizier. Yeah. But... Uh, the name barbecue has some disputes. One year, Nasema, uh, the name came about from uh, his mother who used mm. to cook chicken uh, in the streets. And he, she used to, to roast chicken. So people would name him barbecue. Mm. But as many analysts will say, mm. and as people also in Haiti will say, mm -hmm. the name barbecue is coming from uh, the fact that this Jimmy Cherizier uses brutal force to to try and uh, go over the descent of other people who are opposing him. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the method that he used to, to kill people is to burn them. Wow. And he burns them inside the house. You are locked inside the house, mm. you get burned. That is what he, he did in, uh, in Haiti, mm. uh, where he killed 71 people by dismembering and also burning them. So that is why he is called mm. barbecue. Mm. Because you know, barbecue is, is a roasting meat. But now in this case, sad enough, mm. barbecue is being used uh, for this person mm. who uh, goes on to burn people. Mm. So that is why he is called and barbecue. And when we are talking about this barbecue, yeah. do you think that our Kenya police are in danger right now in Haiti? Because it's a new <coughs> terrain. Do you think they are, they are, they are, are they safe? They're in Haiti. Because this barbecue, the way you have talked about it, mm. he's a trained soldier. Mm -hmm. He's someone that knows the terrain so well. Yes. Where did this guy even got the muscle to control the people in Haiti? How? The society, the social fabric of Haiti has broken, first of all. So mm. there is no governing, there is no authority, there is nothing. Mm. It's just a lawless country. Because it doesn't have a military mm. force. Mm. Uh, just like in Kenya, the other, the other week where the police were overpowered, we called in the military, oh. you know. The military is the last defense. Mm -hmm. So Haiti doesn't have a military. It has not had a military for since 1999 or something, mm -hmm. yeah, because the country was used to counter coups and coups from the military. So they said, to hell with the military. Mm -hmm. Let us do without a military. So they had only the police. Mm -hmm. And now these are the police who are now overpowered by these forces. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that the police are very weak. They, they still control a, part, a larger part of the Port-au-Prince, mm -hmm. but uh, Barbecue and, uh, and the, the GPEP also control quite a big chunk of Port-au-Prince. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you're looking in a society where you don't have authority, there cannot be a vacuum. Someone has to fill that vacuum. And now mm -hmm. that is why Jimmy Cherizier came in to try and fill that vacuum by coalescing a few gangs and being the gang leader, being the most feared person, try to take on resources and everything. So where, where do they get the money? Because if you're running a gang, True. you have to get money. They get money through extortion, through kidnapping. You kidnap mm -hmm. a person who is from a rich family. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you ask for money from their family. Mm -hmm. They send you the money. There are a few uh, white people there, French people, who get kidnapped. And then they ask for ransom. Money. And then... Release. They release the person. Yeah. You can even be kidnapped thrice. <laughs> <laughs> so this is how this guy so gets money. That is how they get money as well as 
Um, a few, of course, they must be doing taxes mm -hmm. in the areas that they control. Uh, you get, you give them something for protection, and then, so that is how they get money to, to, to continue their business. And where do they get their arms from the United States? Mm -hmm. But not legally, but through illegal means oh. as well. You know, you can trade in illegally through the the porous borders and everything so that is where they get their arms okay what will happen mm. what will happen you know very well that our kenyan soldiers they are there yes. what will happen if this guy is being brought down what will really happen will the, will the conflict still continue mm. or what will really happen haiti has a lot of work to do mm. one yes there is the the problem of armed gangs and everything but once you solve that problem of armed gangs you still have a society to build and this is a society that, as I said, from the 60s and 50s, they are used to people having arms. So it is going to be a very different conversation because, one, you'll still have to give jobs to these yeah. uh, jobless young people. If they don't have jobs, then they will result to gang, to gang, or to gang uh, behavior at the end of the day. So, yes, you need to get the arms out of the civilians. That is one for some period guys welcome to our youtube channel thank you so much for the support thank you so much for the love nini watu true nini watu true sana on this our second episode on haiti mm. hello guys my name is boniface Biriko, and we're here to discuss haiti yes to discuss what uh, the history of haiti yeah. to where it is right now yes all the gangs all the wars the independence the influence of of uh, usa and france and why Kenya had to go to Haiti. Yes, mm. thank you so much, Boni, for gracing the show. Yeah. You know, due, this, we are doing this due to the public demand. Because yes. people are saying that we are talking about a barbecue. Uh, we didn't talk more about, about Haiti, Haiti. Because we are people. talking about the history of Haiti, yes. how they all started. Yes. So we like to educate those people that are outside there yes. on what is happening in Haiti. And mm -hmm. when did this war in Haiti started? Mm -hmm. Boni, can you, mm -hmm. tell some, can you tell us something about Haiti? Well... The, the story about Haiti starts way back. You know, last time we started at 1957. Yeah. So this time we want to go centuries back yes. to 1492 yeah. when Christopher Columbus, the one who uh, found America, yeah. went uh, for the first time to this uh, island called Hispaniola. Mm. And now this was uh, a person who was discovering the world and found this island called Hispaniola. And after some time, called in, you know, he was discovering then calling mm -hmm. the people to come and invade. Mm -hmm. So he called in the Spanish to come and uh, take over this small island. This is the island that hosts Haiti, right, right now, Haiti and uh, the Dominican Republic. So after he called in the Spanish, just a few years later, mm -hmm. they ceded part of that land to the French. But before that, when the Spanish came, they found some people there, they were living there, and uh, they used to call that sp uh, part of land Aiti, A-Y-I-T-I, Aiti. So they, the Spanish, they found locals there, but after some time, they, they really decimated the, the area and they killed a lot of people there, mm. trying to get minerals from that uh, land. They had to get 1,600 Africans from Africa to come and start working in those lands. Mm. So that was the Spanish. But after some time, now they ceded land, as I said, to the French. Mm. And the French now took part of the land and uh, the big portion remained to Spanish. Mm. That is why today you'll find uh, that uh, island has two nations, Haiti and the Dominican Republic. Mm. The Dominican Republic are, have the Spanish influence mm. and then Haiti has the French influence. Mm. That comes even till today. Mm. You'll find that Haiti speaks uh, French Creole, and then you'll find the Dominican Republic as well, uh, very well aligned to, to Spain. And now, uh, when the French took over, now the drama started. Mm. Uh, you know that part of land that they were given was very rich. By the way, Haiti is very rich. Mm. It, has very, it had gold, and oh. it had a very ripe uh, soil for planting mm. sugarcane. Mm. So they had all these minerals and everything, uh, agriculture but they didn't have manpower because as i said earlier the, the locals who are living there were killed and uh, frustrated just by people coming in from different parts of the world to move in there so the french had to 
bring in Africans to come and work as slaves, mm -hmm. you know. So it is even recorded that uh, a third of the transatlantic trade went to Haiti. A third of the people who were traded, uh, sadly, human beings who were traded in the transatlantic trade went to Haiti. So Haiti took a lot of Africans from West Africa to go and, and live there. That is why Haiti today is predom predominantly African. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So after some time, they, the, the French ruled with uh, an iron fist in Haiti, uh, having slaves and taking a lot of minerals from uh, Haiti to France. But there was a French Revolution. Yeah, There was a French Revolution around uh, 1897, around there. There was a French Revolution that uh, made, caused the awakening of the, the, the French people. The people who wanted this revolution also had opined that there is a need for Africans to be recognized as also a people and to be given free will to choose whatever they want to choose. So when uh, after, in, in between this French Revolution, there was also the Haiti Revolution. They took advantage of that, Haitians took advantage of that also, and started their own revolutions. Mm -hmm. After some time, they were, they were able to manage to fight the French and got independence. So that is how Haiti came to be born. In fact, this is, I think, this is 1804, sorry, this was 19, 1790 something, the revolution, uh, 1791, all the way to 1800s. So Haiti got its independence in 1804. That is when the, the nation Haiti came to be born. Uh, and that was the second independent nation in the Americans. Oh. Yeah, so Haiti comes from very far. And that is why you find there's a, there's a very rich history in Haiti. Mm. It is the first slave revolt in the world to ever take place and took place successfully. That is where we can reach now and say Haiti was born. Okay, when you mm. continue, you yes. know that Haiti, they are speaking in French. Yes. What will happen? Because in Kenya, uh -huh. we speak in English and Kiswahili. Uh -huh. What is going to happen over there? You know very well that uh, our first soldiers are there. Uh -huh. How are, going, how are they going to communicate with the people over there? How? Let us, let, let us take it from there. Uh -huh. Haiti now is born. Yes. We have a nation called Haiti yeah. that speaks French, as you, as you are going to answer that question. Now, um, all these Western countries mm. are worried that yes. we have a country here that is African and can show the world that Africans can govern themselves. You know, That is something that... Uh, Western nations did, did not want to be heard anywhere. Mm -hmm. Because at that time, Britain uh, wanted also to colonize uh, part of Africa. They came later to colonize part of Africa. They had those interests as well. France had a lot of colonies around the world. Mm -hmm. uh, the US didn't want also this, you know, the US will do align with the West because they are, they are partners or trading partners or allies. So they didn't want this conversation. At that time as well, U.S. was also participating in transatlantic trade, taking blacks to, um, to America and making them to work in farms and ETC as, as slaves. So they didn't want this conversation of uh, Africans governing themselves. So what did France do? They, France and, and the Allies, and Britain and Germany and, and the U.K. and the U.S. Uh, stopped working with Haiti, did not recognize Haiti as a nation. Therefore, Haiti was isolated. For a very long time, Haiti was isolated. And when, when you are isolated, you really cannot do anything. You cannot trade, you cannot mm -hmm. have diplomatic relations, you cannot do anything. Basically, you are condemning that nation to mm -hmm. poverty. But after some time, King Charles X of France came forth and said, you know what, um, France was uh, in Haiti, France was the colonizer. Now France want to give, wants to give you freedom, but this freedom will come at a cost, you know. Mm. They gave Haiti freedom, but they, they, get, they, they, they made a deal to have a huge sum of money as loans to Haiti, so that Haiti will be paying France for the freedom that it has, it has mm. gotten. And you know that is very unfair, by the yeah, way, true. because this country has fought with blood. Mm. Yeah? Independent. Jean-Jacques was the, was, the, was the emperor, the first emperor of, of, of uh, Haiti who liberated the country in Jean 1804. Jean-Jacques, yes. Mm. He 
fought with it it is by the way it is recorded as the most bloodiest or brutal um, war mm. in modern history because these people fought for their nation but then again they fought for their nation but every other nation that is supposed now to work with them mm. is against them one and two now france is coming to say that you have to pay loans to us from nowhere yeah. you know <laughs> so haiti over a period of time haiti started paying loans mm. to france you know condemning that country to poverty and that is why uh, as as proud as we are as africans that was our first ever african nation to be able to govern itself, but it was condemned to poverty by these Western forces. So you mean Haiti is an African nation? It, it is. It is. We can call it an African. <laughs> it is not in the African continent, uh, but it is an African nation. It is a yeah, black because, nation. Uh, because because uh, I know that some people are asking themselves that this country is not in Africa. Not so in many Africa. people over there in Haiti are black. They are black. So people are asking themselves. It is because happened. of the transatlantic trade oh. that <clears throat> made a lot of uh, African people of African descent to be there mm. and uh, for, for a long time it has been governed by mm. African people. Okay, when you go back now to French, yes. how will our police, because mm. we are worried as Kenyans, how yes. are they going to communicate with people over there? Uh, I, I read somewhere that mm. these pol our policemen and women have been uh, trained and have mm. gone through courses to learn uh, French mm. and they really have been taught the French Creole of Haiti. You know, there are different, uh, we can call them genres mm. of French. It is not the French that is spoken in France. Mm. This is, it has some Creole that is Haitian, makes it Haitian because it has some mix of other languages. These Africans, when they went there, they also had their own language. So when they mixed it with France, it became something different. Mm. So they, they were taught this, this language and that is what they're going to use. That is first, second. You don't really need to know the entire language mm. of, of, yes. of, of basically. You just need to know basics mm. of uh, how are you, where are you, why are you going there. Basic questions that can make you communicate with someone so that you can work effectively. As well as, I've seen the photos that yeah. have, have come from there. They are not going to these places alone. They are going with Haitian police officers. Yeah. So they are going to be there as intermediaries to communicate oh. on behalf of them. Yeah. Yes. Okay, let's, let's get back to the gang. Yes. In Haiti, there are so many gangs. If yeah. you see the, the place, mm -hmm. there are so many gangs, like people uh, are in gangs. Yes. Which gangs are these? Because so many people know about the G9 that you mm. talked about. But mm. there are some people who are asking themselves, uh, which gang? Why are you supposed to be in a gang while you are in Haiti? Why? First, mm. this is a nation that has gone through a lot of trauma, as we have discussed here. Mm. I have not even mentioned the fact that uh, the U.S. police officers in 1925 mm. went into Haiti, stormed the, the national vault, that is the, like the central bank, mm. took 500,000 500, U.S. dollars wow. yeah, and went away with it, just like that. you know. And that time the dollar was very high, it's not compared to right now. Mm. So it, it is a country that has undergone a lot of trauma and uh, governing has been a problem as well mm. because you find that uh, a leader comes into office and then you have a lot of conflicts, mm. mismanagement of resources. People who are taking leadership are only thinking about themselves. They're not thinking about the people. So the people, when they try to revolt, because this is a nation that has been born from revolt, when they try to revolt, they're suppressed mm -hmm. by dictators like Duvalier, mm. and it causes a lot of frustrations. So that is why you find that uh, even the army, was not um, was not able to call down these these mm. these issues because you'll find that the army went through coups. The mm. army was conducting coups, mm. coup and counter coup, coup and counter coup. So mm. the army was sort of disbanded. Mm. Mm. I, I have information that they around around fifteen hundred. But you can see this is a country that has undergone a lot mm. uh, from France and the U.S. and the countries that uh, have aligned against it. Yes. Sort of the world was just uh, isolating this country for nothing. Mm. So that is why you find that there is a, there's a lot of uh, challenges in terms of coming up to govern. 
um, because you'll find that these vested interests, I, I cannot confirm this, but people are saying that these vested interests have gone even to the governments of the day mm. to try and influence these governments, mm. not to work for the people and to work for the for these uh, other countries that are uh, having interest in this, mm. in, this uh, in this country. So that is why you find that it is a bit uh, a problem. Now, when you have a society that doesn't have uh, governance, a society that doesn't have authority, it becomes a very, very big challenge and facilitates or encourages gangs to prop up mm. because there cannot be a lacuna, a quasi corner, any uh, space left f uh, without governance. Mm. Normally, human beings uh, de facto lazima kutakuwa na governance. Mm. So someone will take over. If the government will not, talk, will not take over, the church will. If the church won't take over, mm. then gangs will take over. Mm. And now you see that uh, Haiti now is, is uh, marred by gangs. Mm, true. Uh, you have the G9, the major gangs at the G9, G Pep, mm. and the 400 Mawozo. Mm. If you come to the G9, the Delma 6, this is uh, the one that is being run by our guy, Babaki, we won't talk so much about that, yeah, we, we yeah. talked about the other time. So the GPEP is mainly affiliated with the opposition, mm. as the G9 was affiliated with the government of the day when uh, President uh, Jovenel Moïse was mm. the president. The GPEP is mostly affiliated with uh, the people who were dissenting against uh, mm. the president, Jovenel Moïse, mm. the, the opposition then. So. All the opposition would uh, seek the indulgence of the GPEP mm -hmm. to counter the G9. And then we have the 400 Mawozo, and this was just incorporating all uh, people who are uh, former police officers, mm -hmm. they will join that. Former uh, deportees, people who were deported from Haiti, will join the 400 Mawozo. Mm -hmm. Mainly not uh, in Port au Prince, but outside Port au mm -hmm. Prince in other, in other cities in, in Haiti. But the main two are uh, the G9 and the GPEP. Then there are others, very many uh, gangs in Haiti, mm. in different parts of the country that are still controlling. Some are very, some are weak, we can say some are weak, mm. some are very strong. Yes. True. When you come back to, let's come back to this barbecue. Yes. You said last time that this barbecue gets fun from, uh, from attacking people, yes, kidnapping. from kidnapping people. Yes. Right now I saw yesterday, Barbecue helping people in the society. Mm -hmm. How will this gay helping people while in this at some point mm -hmm. kidnapping people? <coughs> it, it is a it is an issue that is a, a bone of contention. Mm. One, um, there is no leader who will gain popularity mm. without being seen as a savior. Mm. We say that one man's uh, savior. Mm is another man's, or one man's terror, terrorist mm. is another man's savior. Mm. These people who, uh, let us leave Haiti out of this, and yes. I, I'm not I'm implicating in any way that these, yeah. they are terrorists. But when you come to the aspect of terrorism, we are here in Kenya and we know terrorism very well. Yeah, true. Because our neighbor here has a problem with uh, some, some, lead, some people who are called Al-Shabaab. Mm. When you go to these villages that are controlled by Al-Shabaab, they'll tell you Al-Shabaab, they are our heroes, mm. you know. So, even when you go to, what is this country, Colombia? Mm. Is it Colombia where uh, this narco, narco king mm. came from, this uh, uh, came from, mm. uh, Pablo Escobar. Pablo. Yeah. Mm. He was, he was yeah, seen as a savior. Yeah. yeah? In, in Medellin, mm. or Medellin, the place where he came from. If you go there, they still have his portrait mm. as a savior. But what do we know about Pablo Escobar? Mm, yeah. Killed a lot of people, sure. killed a lot of, a lot of police uh, men and women, mm. uh, committed terrorist attacks mm. in his own country, yeah, and supported people uh, taking drugs. Mm. So when you go even to our neighbor here and you go to regions or villages that are controlled by Al Shabab, they'll tell you that the Al Shabab is a very good uh, mm. uh, gang or not a gang, uh, a very good authority here mm. that brings us what we need. Mm. So when you start uh, also looking at how things are there in Haiti, you'll find that uh, the, the man himself, barbecue, mm. will try as much as possible to win the hearts mm. of uh, the people that he is governing or the people in his territory so that they cannot revolt also against him. Mm. You have to be good to the people. So as much as you have cordoned off that territory from receiving aid or from receiving supplies because we know that they are also taking over uh, 
petrol or oil supplies at ETC mm -hmm. to govern them themselves. They have to supply them uh, to the people who are in their territories. And then you have to show that you are the better leader than the other gang so that you can have more uh, more support. Okay, right, right now, yes. after barbecue saw that the soldiers of Kenya were sent to them, yeah. he decided to, he said that he's going to make a dialogue with the GPEP and the mm. G9 so that they can join and fight mm. Kenyans. Why, why are they declaring that taking Kenyans as a, a, as a nini, very dangerous to them? Why? They are, they are a threat. Mm. One, because uh, we have been living in a it's a society that has didn't, wasn't a threat to you. Yeah, we know that the society was not a threat to to barbecue yeah. because for the uh, few months that we've known and we've followed this story, we've not had anything that was threatening uh, barbecue that yeah. much. We know that the police had been overcome. Yeah. There is no military. There is nothing really uh, yeah. except the other gangs, the rival gangs. Yeah. So when you hear that two thousand five hundred. Gun, guns yeah. are coming to aim at you, yeah. you really have to consider yeah. your options. So he's trying to make a deal with the current prime minister, yeah. which is something that has been happening in Haiti, unfortunately. Yeah. And uh, it will, for me, to me, I think it will just bring a cycle, a yeah. cycle of these events happening. Because what if you don't, yeah. if you don't satisfy these people? Yeah. Like here in Kenya, we say that <coughs> you, uh, Kenyans don't negotiate with the terrorists. Yes. yes. If, if you don't, if you, if, if you are there and, and you don't satisfy these people, they'll just aim the guns at you. True. So I don't think that will solve anything. The only thing that will solve a problem or the Haitian problem right now, take the guns from the civilian, mm -hmm. establish a, 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 fo a formidable government, only the police should have guns, and uh, make sure that you stop the inflow of weapons from the U.S. True. Because these illegal weapons, most of them are coming from the U.S. through the, the, the Florida uh, ports mm. uh, into Haiti. So if you stop that flow of weapons and just take all the weapons and uh, let the weapons remain with the government, then I think it will be a step forward to solving this problem. Mm. As you finish, what <coughs> can you say the last thing? What can you say mm. the last thing as you are finished in Haiti about talking about something <coughs> like advice that you can give if the leader, the gang leader yeah. watches this video mm. and uh, the police that are in Haiti mm. and the people who are in Kenya are negative about the police officers that are outside there fighting for Haiti. Yeah. What can you say? To the gangs. Yes, to the <coughs> gangs. Um, I believe a nation should be built through consensus. Mm. Yeah, um, I know the struggle that people might have in terms of trying to secure a better future for themselves. And uh, the fact that sometimes this is looking like it is an unfortunate deal. Mm. For example, here in Kenya, we have also a government and not everyone likes this government. Okay. But we, we say that we will deal with whatever we are dealing. We will elect the people who we are electing. We are not comfortable also, all of us, but we try as much as possible to push them to do the right thing. True. So it doesn't really warrant someone to take up a gun and start firing at their own civilians. These guns are against their own people. It is not, it is not a revolution per se, mm. because if, if it was a revolution, then well, it could be an entire nation. Mm. But this is not, it doesn't seem like a, a, a revolution mm. because we have gangs who have guns and are aiming at each other. So the, pro the problem uh, can be solved by having dialogue, yeah. that is to the gangs. To the police, our men and, uh, and women in uniform, our police officers and as well police officers from different countries who are going to join them and the Haitian police officers, you are doing a good job. And it takes a lot of courage, more so uh, from our officers, True. to leave your homeland and go to a different homeland to just maintain peace. Yeah. If at all, and we don't wish this will happen, that blood will be split uh, spilled in in haiti yeah. your 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 sacrifice will never be forgotten and we don't wish that but your sacrifice will never be forgotten in the struggle to pan-africanism this I, I picture this as a struggle for pan-africanism and uh, this is something that should be commended they are they are there to keep peace True. they are not there to kill haitians they are not there to cause havoc they are there to maintain peace yeah take the guns and make sure that you have a government as soon as possible. Do elections because you don't have a government right now. 
the government should be for the people so that they should do elections and make sure that uh, we have uh, a government that is running for the people. Now to our people here, I think what we have to do is just support our men and women. They're already there. Yeah, they're already there. Let us support our men and women in uniform so that they can go there and come back victorious. Yes. For me, what I can say is uh, I have advice for the gang leaders in Haiti mm -hmm. that they should maintain peace. They should know that they are fighting against your own. And it's very bad yeah. for a country to mm. fight your own people. Yeah. Those are your people. Mm. There's no other people that can come and make that country. Yes. They can put guns. They can even barbecue can be elected once again as the, the leader of the... And in the leader of the police over there once again, yes. and they elect a president so that the president can negotiate with other countries to make their country better. Talking about the um, Haiti mission, the MSS forces in Haiti, this is a UN backed mission. It is not a UN mission. That is why you find that they are not wearing the blue helmets that the UN usually wear. They are not blue helmets. This is a UN backed mission. So the difference between a UN mission and a UN backed mission is that a UN backed mission is a mission from another country that has a coalition of other countries that has the blessings of the United Nations. So they are not answerable to the UN, they are answerable to the country that called or organized this uh, coalition of forces. So in the case of the MSS forces in Haiti, it is a US uh, mission. So this is a US-led mission that has come up with uh, a contingent of countries, Kenya being the lead, and then you have uh, Jamaica, you have other countries, Guinea, that have said that they will supply forces to Haiti. In a UN mission, by the way, another example of a UN-backed mission is AMISOM. AMISOM is an African Union mission in, uh, in Somalia, but it is a uh, blessed with the United Nations. So that is a UN-backed mission. But uh, a UN mission is a mission that is uh, from the UN. It is answerable to the UN and those wear the blue helmets. Uh, for example, the UN mission in South Sudan, the UN mission in, uh, in, in Congo that has been there for a very long time, and UN missions across the world, uh, you can signify them by wearing the the, the blue the blue helmets so that is the difference our forces uh, went to Haiti and uh, they got a very good uh, review just the other day by recapturing a hospital in Haiti the university hospital in Haiti was recaptured and these are the fruits of we're starting to see the fruits of the Kenyan forces in Haiti by recapturing a very critical infrastructure a hospital is a very critical in infrastructure that has been recaptured now uh, will be used by the Haitian government to try and attend to uh, wounded civilians as well as wounded uh, members of the forces who will be countering the gangs there. That is uh, the review of what is happening currently in Haiti. So we have started seeing the fruits of the Kenyan forces in Haiti. Just the other day, um, first of all, Kenya has increased the number of troops uh, from uh, 200 uh, with an additional 200. So, so far, we have 600 Kenyan troops in Haiti, but Kenya has also uh, assisted the Haitian police to recapture a hospital in Port-au-Prince, uh, the university hospital, and this is a major, major win for the forces there. As, as, as we earlier stated or as we earlier discussed, the role of the first contingent of forces is to, is to secure critical infrastructure that will assist the rest of the forces in total 2500 forces from different parts uh, of the world to come in and assist uh, Haiti to get back on its feet. So well they secured uh, the university hospital which is a major major win that is going to assist um, the forces as well as the public in general. This hospital was captured five months ago at the height of the breakout of the gangs when they also uh, managed to break out people from, uh, from the prisons and ETC. So it was quite an intense activity during that time and they captured this hospital and just recently they engaged into, in, in a very, very uh, difficult time when they engaged with uh, the forces there. You find that uh, a lot of 
gunfire exchanges went on and at the end of the day the forces the asian forces and the mss forces there that is the kenyan forces uh, were managed to recapture that hospital and now uh, it is in the hands of the haitian government even the uh, the prime minister visit, visited the hospital and went there and also you found that uh, they were able to man manage to secure that hospital. The reason why they don't want to see barbecue initiating with, uh, with barbecue with the prime minister coming up together with a dialogue and also mm -hmm. there is something that is going on. Mm -hmm. they, do, they want our soldiers mm -hmm. to arrest barbecue or kill our soldiers. Mm -hmm. Can you explain to us the reason why they want that to be done and you tell them the a function of our Kenya police. Mm -hmm. Is it to kill someone or mm -hmm. to do what? Tell them something. Well, um, before, before we even get to that, yeah. just uh, I think it is on Tuesday, yeah, our forces, 200 more, yeah. went to Haiti. So right now we have a total of 600 yeah. of the Kenyan forces in Haiti. That means that the forces now have grown and only 400 are remaining here in Kenya because we were, or we promised, Kenya promised 1,000 forces yeah. over the 2,500 that are going to be contributed by also other countries. So, well, barbecue has made Haiti suffer. Yeah. Barbecue has brought a lockdown in Haiti. People cannot uh, move freely. People cannot live freely. And if a person is coming to infringe in your freedoms and rights, then you really don't want that person to be to stay any longer because of the pain and the suffering that uh, the person has brought. So that is why you're finding that uh, many Haitians out there supported the move to have Kenyans uh, in, the, in, 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 their, in their soil. And you can find um, even different medias which uh, engage the locals. You'll find that they're saying, the locals are saying that Kenyans are welcomed as long as they, of, of course, as long as they uh, go with the laws, as how the laws are supposed to, to go, and uh, not uh, arrest people without uh, having cause or uh, causing harm to, to the civilians. So it is, a, it is a moment where the country is seeing hope. A country that has lost around 500,000 people to go to outside countries because there was unrest in their country. A country that has lost people to kidnappings and death and, and, and threats mm -hmm. is now seeing a hope, something coming sure. uh, that will give them a future. So mm -hmm. Kenyan forces are there to, first of all, restore order in Haiti. Mm -hmm. They are not there to, to keep peace. True. This is not a, so, uh, we can say a peacekeeping mission. It is not a peacekeeping mission. Mm -hmm. Uh, because they are not going to stand in the way and then allow people to negotiate. That is not the case. These MSS forces are going there to make sure that uh, Haiti returns back to its normalcy. Yeah. That means they are going to engage the, 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 the gangs and they are going to side. They are already siding with the government mm -hmm. that is given. So they are not there to say that uh, the government is on one side and the gangs are on one side. No, they are going to help the government to counter these, these uh, insurgencies or these gangs. So that is the role of the Kenyan forces. In Do you think Barbecue will give up on this fight? Do you think he's going to give up and say that, ah, I've decided to go to prison, I've decided to be arrested? Do you think it may reach a time that Barbecue may decide to give in yeah. to the Prime Minister's demand? It is not certain because uh, Barbecue has, uh, we can say he has come from, a very, f from very far. And uh, if you look at his history, uh, it, it goes way back, uh, mm -hmm. even during the presidency of Juvenal Moise. Mm -hmm. So this means that Babaki has he has that goal that he wants to achieve. Mm -hmm. Recently, it became political, and he also wanted also to be uh, one of the presidents in Haiti uh, in history. So Babaki has a goal to achieve, and uh, I don't think he's going to just lay down his arms. He is going to put up a fight, and uh, I know. All the forces, the Kenyan forces, the MSS forces, uh, are expecting, together with the Haitian police, they are expecting a fight from from Babacu. Mm. Even in re, in uh, recapturing that hospital, they engage in a fight. So, mm. Babacu is not there to to just allow people to come and then take their arms and say I surrender because, of course, mm. Babacu will go to jail. Uh, if anything, he will be captured and he will go to jail and possibly he will never be released because. He has committed crimes against humanity, mm. killed a lot of people. So uh, come what, what may, he will put up a fight and I know they are expecting a fight. As you can see that recently Barbecue decided to recruit children. What mm. can you say about that? Why is he coming and recruiting children in his gang? 
it, it is unfortunate. Mm, it is unfortunate. Sad. And before you even come to that, I have to make sure that uh, I give also people the context of the Kenyan forces that yeah. are going there. These are elite squads. Mm. You know, when people were saying that Kenyan forces are going to Haiti, many thought that there were these regular uh, yeah. police officers that we see around here. These are elite forces. These are Reke squad, uh, SOG. We have the Border Patrol unit. These are elite squad that mm. are at the rank almost of the military forces here in Kenya, True. you know, advanced military forces. So when when we are speaking about the Kenya police in Haiti, we're not just speaking about anyone. We are speaking about the best of the very best here in Kenya mm. that have trained for quite some time and even gone to urban warfare. They understand urban warfare very well. True. It's only that uh, they've not actually trained in the Haitian landscape and they have the Haitian police to tell them where to go and where not to go. That being said, it is unfortunate that uh, barbecue is using uh, children sure. in his course because uh, you know a warlord is a warlord if you're presenting your your own views regardless of what you're doing an armed struggle or a peaceful struggle at least there are some there's some lines that you're not supposed to cross sure. if you go to crossing those lines and using children uh, to take up arms against uh, the government or other people then i think that is beyond that person is beyond saving. Sure. Yeah, these are the tactics that are being used by terrorists uh, in, the, in, in the Middle East, terrorists in, in some parts of Africa. So there is a need for us to have that genuine conversation because we understand people will always look at this thing twofold. Mm -hmm. Some people will support barbecue because of the disgruntlement that uh, people have Indeed. against the West, yeah. against uh, people who have had power in Haiti. And that is okay yeah. because you have freedom of speech. Sure. But then again, we have also to consider that and, and look at the, the real thing that is happening. If you're using children to, to fight uh, the, this, uh, the government, then what generation are we expecting to yeah. rule over? And in just Haiti? want to negotiate with the government. Exactly. Yeah. So it is very unfortunate that we are going to that extent, but it is something that many uh, gang leaders and criminals use. Mm. They use the innocence of children because uh, as someone who is underage, there is a reason why we say someone is underage, because they are not mature enough. Sure. They cannot think uh, beyond what they are seeing right now. Uh, a person who is grown up will know that if I take this arm and I start engaging these people, I might lose my life sure. and people who are depending on me will, will have lost. Mm. But a child will not uh, perceive all these things. They will not see beyond that. Even if you look at what is happening in, uh, in Mexico and other Latin American, Colombia, which are fighting uh, drug or drug warlords mm -hmm. that are fighting the government. They use children and that is a sad situation because when you're using a children, when you're using a child, that means that you are not respecting the laws of nature True. to allow uh, children to grow up, mature and make their own decision. That one will be taken to uh, akin to you are trying to uh, sabotage their future. You are also taking away their innocence mm. and uh, you're radicalizing these children to only follow you. Boni, tell yeah. them something. Hello guys, today we are looking also at Haiti, at yes. the new developments that have been happening in Haiti. Yeah. Yes, we are very proud of our Kenya police. They yeah, are doing are. an extraordinary job to and raising the flag of Kenya so high in mm -hmm. Haiti. People mm -hmm. were saying that our police are going to face a hard time there in Haiti. Mm -hmm. Our police are going to be killed. Our police, they don't know how to speak in French. They mm -hmm. don't know uh, the language of people in Haiti. Mm -hmm. Our police don't communicate so well. What can you say about our police? First of all, Jeff, mm -hmm. let, me, let me speak to our nationals in yes. the best language that they understand. Yeah. The police in Kenya, Watenda Pale Haiti, they will flop, yeah. they will come back like this, like this. We are talking about Kenya, our police service are professionals. True. When they go out there to represent our nation, they represent as well. And for the matter of fact, they are well equipped yeah. to go out there. So Juzi, our police officers went to Haiti yeah. and uh, they, they, they managed to recapture a port. Yeah. Just the other day we were speaking about them uh, aiding the Haitian police yeah. to recapture a hospital. Yeah. Today they've recaptured a port from the gangs. Mm -hmm. And that is a major, major win yes. for our police officers yeah. in Haiti. And we keep cheering them on. Yeah. And that shows that, uh, you know, the professionalism in our police officers and uh, the fact that what we're going on as a same police officers what uh, what, uh, what uh, fail just because you have a different political opinion yeah my friend it doesn't happen like that yeah. and it cannot happen like that 
the police officers that were sent in Haiti are professionals and they are representing our, yeah. our, our country very well. And that withstanding, mm -hmm. even the police officers in this country who are in this country and keeping us safe yeah, true. are professionals. Well, what I can say about the Kenya police, yes. I saw the video today in the morning. It wasn't an easy job. It was it a wasn't. gun battle mm -hmm. with the gangs. It mm -hmm. wasn't easy that they thought that the police, you know very well that police fighting protesters right now in Nairobi, mm -hmm. they are fighting innocent protesters. But yes. there, those mm -hmm. people are armed. It was a gun battle between mm -hmm. the gangs and the police. Mm -hmm. And no police was killed. Mm -hmm. There were no police that was killed. But, and they uh, decided to rescue there mm. what did they the report the port that shows the professionalism yeah. and mm. the, the 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 fact that they were well trained so. and ready for this yeah. secondly you know they were there to the assignment is to recapture this critical infrastructure as sure. we said earlier the first one was the hospital to yeah. make sure that when someone is hurt they can easily get medical attention sure. and the second one now is the port to make sure that if they need supplies from the sea they will come it will come through the port and it will not have any difficulty to reach yeah. them yeah. so these are very critical infrastructures that the police had to go and maintain uh, inclusive of also of the prime minister's uh, residential mansion and everything yeah. to make sure that uh, we have a system or a structure or a country that can work first yeah. of all True. before now they go to gang infested regions they have somewhere they can go back to mm. and and make sure that they have the supplies that they need so that was very very important yeah bonnie when we finish mm. what do we expect from our kenya police right now they have proven mm. what what how do you think the gang leader who is mm. barbecue is feeling how mm. does is the guy afraid or what can is your opinion what he, can you say he must be a person who is afraid yeah because one this infrastructure were earning him a lot of money. Okay. If you're looking at uh, a port, if someone captures a port, of course the port was not uh, dormant. This yeah. port was still active, even True. when it was uh, controlled by the gangs. Everything that was passing from the port mm. to the country had to pay some levy to the gangs. Yeah. Right now, they don't have that levy. Yeah. That's why they were fighting, so that uh, this uh, government or MSS forces could not have control. But fortunately, the MSS forces have uh, gotten the control of this, this critical infrastructure. And that means that they have less money to work with. You know, if we say in criminal world, you follow the money. True. And if you want to, to kill a gang, if you want to kill a criminal entity, just cut the supply of money. And that is the first thing that uh, our, our forces there are doing. They are cutting the supply of that money. That means that they are cutting the operation funds of these gangs and soon enough they will not have anything else to pay their people, they will not have anything else to operate with and that is how a gang will, will die. Yeah. yeah. What can you say the last thing to the mm -hmm. Kenya police, the Kenyans and the Haiti gang leader who is just... What, what I have nothing to say because this guy, if yeah. I could be this guy, I could have surrendered mm. and say that it's enough, it's enough, mm -hmm. let me just go to prison. But this guy is trying to be a hard nut to crack. Mm -hmm. What can you say? First of all, to the Kenyans, I think uh, we have been here before several and say and telling Kenyans to have faith in our forces. Yeah. That our forces are going to be successful and they're going to come back uh, safely and victorious. And this first uh, show has proven to us that this is really happening, that uh, they are doing a good job there. And theirs is not to kill Haitians. Let's just put that out there. Yeah. Theirs is to make sure that Haiti is back into civility. Yeah. You can say that. So that is the first thing to Kenya, that let us cheer on our mm. men and women. Mm. Secondly, uh, to, to the Haitians, just support mm. uh, these MSS forces. True. Our Kenyan uh, brothers and sisters are out there mm to support uh, the, the society to work, yeah. you know. They're not there to do anything else. They're there to support the society to work. Mm -hmm. And we, as, as Kenyans here, of course, these are our people. We still have that love. We still have that connection with them. Yeah. So we want them also to be safe and the Haitian people to accept them uh, peacefully and, and the Haitian police also to work with them closely so that they can achieve uh, the mandate that they're sent to achieve. What I can say about the Kenya police, they are doing a good job. They are fighting for us Kenyans. In fact, they are making our name Kenya to be known outside there and yeah. to be a very big name outside there. Yeah. I really, really appreciate what the Kenya police are doing to us Kenyans. Until mm. next time we say game over.